Hey everyone, Brian Beeler coming to you from Storage Review. And today we're taking a look at a very skinny Enterprise SSD, the Samsung PM9A3. And I have to be careful and I'll probably screw it up at least once in this video because the 9A3 replaces the PM983. Very similar names and uh, I'll surely do it wrong. What's special about this? I said it was skinny. It's very skinny. This is a seven millimeter drive. A seven millimeter isn't uncommon on its face. We saw a lot of drives come out that were seven mil in the enterprise and even in client, but in the NVMe world, it's much less common. Uh, most server ports uh, where these would go in are 15 millimeter uh, drive height now to accommodate the typical U.2 enterprise drive. But that's not the case everywhere. In fact, uh, Lenovo just released an edge server, the SC450, that has six really slim seven millimeter drive slots in it. So there are use cases where being a little bit more narrow can, uh, can be a big advantage. And certain systems uh, manufacturers like Echostreams, for instance, have been known to take a 2U server and slam seven mil slots across the front letting you get, instead of 24 drives, as, as you would in a standard U.2, something closer to in the 40s, uh, which will give you a tremendous amount of, of access across the front. Uh, the other thing that's somewhat unique about this drive is it comes in a wide variety of form factors and capacities. So in the 7 mil uh, U.2 that we've got, it ranges from 960 gig all the way up to a 15 terabyte class drive, which is a pretty big range. We are not seeing that level of, uh, of, of capacity offerings from most providers in the enterprise SSD space. Many of them are looking to get their volume down to two to four capacity points. So Samsung's got a number there. They also offer it in a number of form factors, like I said, M.2, although with a little bit different performance profile, uh, E1S, short ruler, E1L, long ruler, uh, U.2, U.3, so all sorts of things. And Samsung continues to have a really consistent lead when it comes to distribution through servers and storage appliances. So we see these guys and the others in the, the PM family in all sorts of things from NetApp storage arrays to Dell and HPE servers and Lenovo and everyone else, Samsung always comes up. And part of that reason is because they have the uh, history of being a vertically integrated supplier. So this particular product uses their sixth gen VNAN TLC, uh, but it also uses their own in-house controller and in-house firmware. And that vertical integration gives Samsung a big advantage when it comes to being a reliable performer and compatible and uh, everything else in this drive. Uh, the other headlines are it's a single drive right per day uh, part, five year warranty. So this is really in that mainstream workload category for enterprise use cases. Now, as we take a look at the performance spec on this drive, Samsung quotes this at a 6,800 megabytes per second on sequential reads, 4,000 megabytes per second on sequential writes, with the IOPS figures that uh, top out at a million IOPS in, on read and 180,000 on write. And when we look at our performance, what we did is we have this pile of eight, but we looked at um, this review just for a single drive, which is pretty interesting. If you wanna see the eight drive showdown, between the PM9A3 and the Intel P5510. I'll link to that in the description because some of these results flop. So when we look at a single drive, uh, we don't always see that translate once there's a little more overhead in the system across a total of eight drives. The two things that really stand out for the uh, 9A3 though are really the SQL Server latency. So when we put this in an application environment, we see 2.8 milliseconds on the drive that beats out the 5510, which was at four, and the Kyoxia CD6, which was 5.5. So those three are in this cluster uh, of, of direct competitors and something that, uh, at least in the U.S., the, the enterprise uh, systems uh, guys are, are evaluating these drives pretty closely against each other alongside the uh, Micron 7400, which has been announced but is not yet widely available. When we take a look at Sysbench, we see, uh, again, uh, a nice second place finish for the 9A3 with a little over 11,000 transactions per second. 
uh, from that drive, again, ahead of uh, the Kyoxia CD6 and the Intel 5510. Uh, same story when we look at Syspench uh, latency numbers, pretty good there. Um, coming in second again, and uh, average uh, 99th percentile, again, showing really nice performance through the more intensive enterprise applications. And we did, of course, run the synthetic tests. And here, the drive tends to be um, pretty much middle of the road, uh, which is, you know, which is okay. That's just what it is when we look at this this type of workload. Random read 4K, we saw a little over 905,000 IOPS, kind of in the middle there. Again, random write 4K, we uh, we see a little over half million. IOPS uh, with a pretty good uh, latency profile. Again, slotting in a little bit behind the Kyoxia and Intel parts. Uh, from there, as we switch and look at um, larger blocks, sequential read 64K, same kind of story, slotting in the middle, pretty well composed, and, and the sequential write 64K. Uh, again, much better than the older Samsung counterpart that we charted there on the purple. Uh, but still behind the uh, the leaders. So when it comes to overall performance, the drive did well in the applications where we put a little more weight and then sort of midline in the uh, in the four corners synthetic that we took a look at. But as we know that the ultimate performance, the top end performance is not always the driving factor. So if you're a VAR out there and you're looking to put together the highest performing system, uh, based on a single drive right uh, part, it's probably not going to be this drive. You'd be looking at uh, at something else, 5510, maybe the Memblaze part, uh, CD6 perhaps, but this is really an issue of workload. And if you need that high-end high, high end performance, uh, you're really going to want to make sure that you're tuning the storage for that workload and maybe even mixing in some Optane or PMEM if that's what you need. But this particular part isn't really designed for that. It's a universal jack of all trades enterprise storage drive that's going to do really well most of the time. And back when I was talking about the vertical integration, the server vendors and storage vendors want a part that's reliable, that's not going to randomly fall out of RAID or fall off the, uh, the back plane, uh, which is something we see from time to time with the drives we work with here at, at Storage Review. The Samsung part has been really built on a rock solid foundation of just being reliable and being able to hit the minimum spec required by the server manufacturers that are buying these and, and putting them out there in distribution. So yes, there are faster products, but fast isn't always the key buying criteria. The flexibility and form factor, the, uh, the standard two and a half inch form factors, the M.2, the short and long ruler, the wide range of capacities, really mean that this guy can be designed into a lot of use cases where there is nothing else that's even that even comes close and certainly not at this quality so the pm9a3 another really good product from samsung it does what they designed it to do and uh on on that count uh, it'll be another very successful one in the in the uh, storage universe until version 7 of their nand gets mass production and we'll see this guy get updated again and do this over until then, thanks for tuning in.